Hello everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Cool new intro, don't have to say my name anymore. Alright, right into the album. We're talking about Funkadelic self-titled debut album. Whew. Now, if you're one of my regular viewers, you know that I always do Funkadelic, um, usually during Black History Month. And I miscounted. I do that sometimes. And I didn't plan ahead properly. So if you're one of my regular viewers, you'll realize that this didn't get posted on a Wednesday like it should have. It got posted on the Tuesday so I could keep it in the month of February and keep it in Black History Month. Uh, I did a bunch of other black artists already. So, But Funkadelic is always my go-to for Black History Month because funk is fucking awesome, man. I love funk. Who doesn't love funk, man? You gotta love the funk. The funk is awesome. And, and Funkadelic is the funk, man. Now, this album is pre-Bootsy Collins. So let's keep this in mind. But the bass, the bass is still Choice and Cherry. Now, I, I do apologize. I don't remember who plays the bass on this one. But there's this wonderful new format I've got. I don't have to move anymore or anything. There's the cool little box. I just shift my image into a different screen and give you the little box to read. Okay, so there's where you can find the information on the basis. Um, what I will say, though, is um, this this album, man, this, this is this this is literally the blueprints for funk. OK, I love that image on the front. You know, like in today's day and age with Photoshop, no big deal to do. The fact that this was done. Actually, to be fair, if this was not done by hand, by cutting and pasting the image, it was done using a prism filter for a camera. I actually still, to this day, I can show you one right now, as a matter of fact. All right, so this album cover, uh, sorry, I'm getting some glare there. See that? Okay. Now, this is not the exact type of prism filter that would have been used. But it would have been something like this. Now, uh, diamond. Think kind of like a diamond. That would have been like kind of shot through a diamond, sort of. Sort of. Anyways, way off topic. Whew. Music. Uh, the album opens up with Mummy What's Funkadelic. This is a wicked way to open the album. Uh, over nine months of funky jamming, explorations, uh, for everything that... Th this... This is the blueprint for funk, man. This was the first funk album, really. You know? So, I love George Clinton. Produce this album. George Clinton... George Clinton is a music production genius, especially when it comes to funk. Now, all he ever really did was funk or Parliament, and Parliament's a whole different kind of discussion, which I've had in other episodes. You can go watch those. Um, but his allowance for musical exploration or purposely trying to do musical exploration is phenomenal. It really is. And what he allows to happen on albums like this is just oh, beautiful. Um, and it, I mean, you're talking this is the first track on the first album from Funkadelic. So it's arguably the first funk track. It's not actually the first funk track which I'll get into when I get into the bonus tracks later. But that's, yeah. <laughs> now, by today's standard, you know, people are going to be like, well, this is kind of like a little basic, kind of, with the rhythms and stuff like that. But at the time, this was genius. And this is why history is important, kids. You need to know where the shit came from first. You need to know the history. Like, this is stuff that's been used in hip-hop all over the place, man. This is the blueprints for everything that became black music. Uh, North American black music, specifically, we'll say. Sorry. Um, and, and like I said, George Clinton's just a genius producer. Um... After that, we get into I'll Bet You. Uh, this one is very Motown. You can hear the R&B origins in here. Uh, but once again, it's got like a six-minute runtime, so it's got some wonderful musical exploration in it that I just totally dig. Now, 
Motown, R&B, uh, all that, the Detroit music sound, we're gonna say, you know, that, that wasn't, that was before the rock music, like, this is the thing, growing up here in the city of Windsor, Ontario, it's really cool, the diversity I got out of Detroit, now, I'm a rock guy, through and through, I'm a rock guy, so I don't listen to a lot of rap and stuff like that, but, you know, the market for Detroit is so vast and, and different that they have like two country stations or well, they might only have one. Now we might have the other radio country radio station. They've got like three rock stations. They've got numerous rap or top 40 st rap stations and then top 40 stations and crap. Like, like it is really kind of diverse and out there. And Motown was a thing when I was a kid. Not so much anymore. Uh, Motown kind of disappeared, unfortunately, with AM radio. Uh, at least in this area. Um, maybe in other places it's different. But, you know, growing up the way I remember it, that's if you wanted to listen to Motown, you went to AM. Um, and that's probably why I didn't get as much exposure. Because who the hell listened to AM? By the time I was a kid, man, FM was the thing. AM was the thing when my dad was a kid. You know, uh, AM was the thing, you know, Windsor used to be a huge AM station. Major, you know, I've talked about this during Alice Cooper reviews. Anyways, um, so where I was going with this is I've gotten a lot of Motown exposure just by living next to Detroit. Not from the radio, but... Detroit television, Detroit everything, man. Motown is Detroit, okay? You know, Motown Casino is in Detroit. You know, like, this is what I'm trying to get at here. So, you know, like, this is this is one of those things where you, when you know the origins, you know where it comes from. And you can hear it in here. No ifs, ands, or buts on, I'll bet you. All right, I rambled. Uh, music for my mother. Um, this one has some great blues representation at its core like this is definitely more of a blues based kind of song that they built and extrapolated off of there it's still funk but it's got that blues bass you know where it's originating from which is really cool as well um i got a thing you got a thing everybody's got a thing this one has an issue with gratuitous use of the wah petal I mean, the type of over-gratuitous use that Cheech and Chong parodied and their song Black Lassie off of the wedding album. It's friggin' awesome. It's one of the reasons... I mean, I love wah. I, 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 as a bassist, I use the wah on the bass. The bass, it doesn't say, behave the same way as it does with the guitar, but I love the wah. The wah is friggin' awesome. But, it is gratuitous use of it on this song. And... It's so freaking awesome. Usually I bitch when there's gratuitous use, but I, I love it in this one. Um, Eddie Hazel, who is the guitarist, who, who basically did most of the guitar work, like, like all the famous guitar work for Funkadelic. It's always Eddie Hazel's name on it. Maggot Brain, it was Eddie Hazel. Um, he, seriously, when you listen to the way he works a wah and plays and everything, like that, he is one of the most overlooked guitarists of all time. Even within the black community he is still over like it's always hendrix 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 but if you listen to eddie hazel man eddie hazel was doing shit that hendrix was doing too and he was doing it at the same time he was just doing it in a different music genre because a lot of these songs on here were originally recorded in 69 this album was released in 70 I just covered Hendrix. So you know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and listen to it. Eddie Hazel, supremely overlooked. Oh my God. Horribly neglected as a guitarist. In every community I've ever been in. Even in the rock, you know, you, you, all, you read all these Rolling Stone Top 100 guitars bullshit stuff like that. Eddie Hazel is so often pushed so far down the list or pushed off the list or not even represented by all these different lists. It's, it's very sad. Very sad. Even I'm guilty of not giving Eddie Hazel the due that he's honestly deserved. 
Uh, from there, we move on to old school music. Uh, great jam out yet again. Uh, this one also has a bit of an older vibe to it. Um, you know, getting back into that, once again, kind of that old Motown-y kind of vibe. Uh, qualify and Satisfy. Um, same thing I basically just said about the last song. <laughs> what is Soul? Alright, this song ends the album. What is Soul? I don't know. Soul is a ham hock in your cornflakes. Yes, it is. Soul. What is soul? Soul. Soul is the ring around your bathtub. Soul. What is soul? I don't know. Soul is the joint rolled in toilet paper. I love me some well played harmonica. I love me some fun lyrics. I love me some great jamming out musical expl exploration. I love me what is soul. I don't know. <laughs> this, th this album. Okay, so before I get into the bonus tracks, okay, that that is honestly that's that's the album, all right. There there are seven songs on here. The um, the shortest song on this album is three minutes and fifty four seconds, which is I got a thing, you got a thing, everybody's got a thing. Everything else is you know five and a half or more um the album opens up with nine minutes you know this one and it closes at seven minutes and 40 seconds so this this is just a musical exploration album this is a great album this this is the type of shit man that i really wish i would have spent more time being exposed to when i was younger um I'm glad that I waited to get these when they were digitally remastered because, you know, people can say what they want about vinyl and how warm it is, but digital remasters, man, there's just something about them that are beautiful. Especially these ones. Like, all of these remasters have been fantastic. Just beautiful sounding. Okay. Uh, then we get into the bonus songs. We got I uh, Can't Shake It Loose. Recorded in 69. Um, this one really just sounds like How Sweet It Is. Uh, to Be Loved By You from Marvin Gaye. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like they were jamming off of that riff. Uh, real school, old school Motown, not so much funk. Really enjoyable, just not what I'm looking for. Uh, but good tune, all the same. Uh, I'll bet you, uh, 1969, it's the mono mix. Music for your mother, once again, uh, it's basically a mono mix as well. As good as I can feel, um, this is actually a pretty cool number, um, at 2.34, there's some mighty good guitar playing. A little funky, and there's definitely a jazz vibe to this one, too. So, you know, it's kind of really kind of cool that way. I really dig it. Uh, open Your Eyes. I don't like this one. Uh, there's a click slash metronome in the background. Uh, I'm assuming it's a metronome. Could be drums. He's doing it really on point if it's drums. But it sounds like a metronome. I really hate it. Um, qualify and satisfy, um, it's the 45 version, it's more of a single cut, it's shortened down a bit, it's, uh, it goes, uh, the original version was like 618, this one's cut down to 3, and music for your mother, uh, this one is the instrumental 45 version. Uh, it, it's basically got an extended jam into it as well is what it is. Uh, sometimes I'm hit and miss with the bonus tracks on here. The hit and miss, the bonus tracks are just honestly hit and miss. I really don't care about the mono versions. Who listens to anything mono anymore? So having a mono version on a stereo system really just kind of doesn't make sense. Uh, However, that being said, it would be interesting to run the mono versions through an actual mono speaker stereo if I could get my hands on one. You know, maybe, maybe find myself an old uh, CD player where I could put it onto a cassette, make a proper mixtape with mono mixes on it. Ooh, got some of those from the Beach Boys too. 
<laughs> All right. The reason the mono mixes suck, I should mention this, is the stereo mixes sound so much cooler, especially coming through headphones or coming through the stereo, whatever. They are just so full and vibrant with the pans and the, everything like that. It's, it's wonderful. I love it. Um, should you get this album? Absolutely. Absolutely you should get this album. This is an amazing album. This is history for your ears. This is this is the future for your ears too because man, funk has got to come back. This is some good stuff. And I'm not just talking some cheap cheese funk. I'm talking good funk like this, man, where you actually had some real musical explorations and shit like that. Not that funk stuff that eventually, you know, kind of feels like it transmuted into ska. Anyways, Folks, let me know what you think of this album. That is what below is for. You got the comment section. Leave me a message in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, hit the like button, the subscribe button, the little bell for notifications. Small clicks for you. Helping me a lot. Um, there is a link to Patreon below. I should mention that I will be having locals coming soon. Working out all the beginning stuff for that. So that will be starting out very soon. Peace. Love, take care.